the name keeps showing up over and over again. It's a company called McKenzie, McKenzie and Company, and it's a consulting firm that consults for 80 to 90 percent are the top 100 companies in the world, right? And they do all sorts of consulting and super data analytic, uh, analytic driven. They only bring the top, top, top people of society to come work for them. Most of them don't even have a business degree. You know, I have people from completely different backgrounds. And I started doing some research on this company and I started doing some research on this company and I'm going to do the research with you guys. So I haven't seen some of these videos that I've pulled up. I haven't seen any of it. All right, perfect. So let's watch this shit. This is Emmanuel Macron on the night of April 24th, 2022. He's at Paris's iconic Field of Mars, right in front of the even more iconic Eiffel Tower. The crowd gathered in front of him, chanting his name and waving flags, is on cloud nine, because not 30 minutes ago, the national broadcast announced that Macron had been re-elected to the French presidency for five more years. And even though he was always preferred to win, if you rewind the clock just two months back, things didn't look so good for the sitting president. Two months ago, the scandal since dubbed McKinseygate started making its way through the French press. If you've never heard of McKinseygate, don't worry. It's very simple and we don't need to go back very far to understand it. In early March of 2022, the French Senate conducted an investigation into the finances of Macron's executive branch. They were looking for something fishy following leaks. Guaranteed it's consulting, consulting fees, bro. Watch, watch the bribes be consulting fees. In the press about the government relying a bit too much on consultants and lo and behold, they found what they were looking for. Right there in the budget of the Elysee, France's presidential palace, they found a nearly 1 billion euro bill from various consulting groups racked up in just one year. Holy I don't shit. need to tell you that 1 billion euros is a massive amount. Think of it like 1 billion dollars. Does that help? No? Alternatively, you can think of it as 200 times what the French government spent promoting equality between men and women. Anyway. Laundering, bro. What? <laughs> The report found that one firm in particular, McKinsey and Company, seemed to be getting the lion's share of the presidential wallet and may have been benefiting from favoritism. Furthermore, tax dollars there? Is that, is that, the that, Senate is alleges that, that McKinsey's dollars? French branch hasn't paid a single cent in corporate taxes during the past 10 years, despite making a cool 330 million euros on French soil. First lucrative government funding, then missing taxes. The whole thing seemed a bit weird. As a 100% impartial journalist, I should tell you that McKinsey denies the tax avoidance allegations. Of course so does. you can make of that whatever you want. In any case, that's not the point. Macron's been dragging this reputation of president of the rich ever since he took office. And now all of France just found out that he spent a Bezos-like amount of public money on a few private cabinets well known for their place in high society. What's more, these consulting firms were given big responsibilities, like orchestrating the national strategy on COVID vaccinations and setting climate change plans for the future. I told you it's all a scam. All of it. Setting up COVID plans, getting paid billions of dollars to set up COVID plans, bro. <laughs> Shit's amazing. Firms were given big responsibilities, like orchestrating the national they outsourced this, this whole pandemic, they outsourced it to private companies. They, they printed money, public money, and then they distributed it to private companies. They strategy on COVID everybody. vaccinations and setting climate change plans for the future. Not exactly a small ask for just a few private firms. If you're the guy in charge, you couldn't ask for worse timing for a scandal like this. With barely over a month until the first round of elections, Macron's response had to be immediate and authoritative. Guarantee, gar guaranteed he's going to say that it's all bullshit. Manipulation, que ça aille au pénal. Ensuite, moi, je demande qu'on nous donne aussi de la profondeur. Comment, depuis 15 ans, les contrats avec les consultants ont évolué Je suis pas persuadé que... Le gouvernement. Je suis pas persuadé que sous ce quinquennat, il y a eu moins de contrats que sous certains autres. Y compris de cette... Macron's position is clear. Macron's position is clear. We are less criminal than the last criminals. All of this is perfectly legal. And not just that, it's nothing special. After all, previous administrations used consultants too. Why should he be the one to deprive himself of that privilege? The subtext here being that not only is this not a big deal, it's being made into one to try to make him lose the upcoming election. But as you might expect from this channel, not only is Macron's argument that, well, he did it too, pretty weak when you're trying not to look guilty, He's wrong. 
this is kind of a big deal. McKinsey Gate, and I hate that name by the way, can we just stop adding gate to scandals? McKinsey Gate. Recon on McKenzie Gate, ladies and gentlemen. I need to find out what the fuck's happening. Highlighted something deeper within our society that extends far beyond the walls of the French presidential palace. Specifically, who are these people we call consultants and why are they so influential? The place to start is to determine whether consultants are really that influential at all. And why not let them answer that question in a completely neutral way? For example, you probably know us for our work in strategy and finance. But what you may not know is that we're helping all industry sectors cut carbon emissions by half. Bro, they're in on it. They're in on the, they're they're in on the whole thing. They're in it with the World Economic Forum. I knew it. I knew it. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. I knew it. I knew it. Look at this. They're, 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 all in, they're all in bed. They're all in bed. Every single last one of them. Mackenzie and the World Economic Forum. Ah, uh, here we go. War in Ukraine. Nice. 2030 agenda. Damn, bro. Who are you? I don't know. I'll do some research on you later. But they're all in bed together, ladies and gentlemen. It's all the same bullshit. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you're coming from. You're controlled. You're manipulated. Just get used to it. At this point, it's undeniable. At this point, it's undeniable. Cut emissions by 2030. It sounds really World Economic for me. Sounds very World Economic Forum. No wonder they're no wonder they're probably influencing governments to pass Agenda 2030 and the whole nonsensical bullshit with carbon credits in the Paris Accord Agreement. Guaranteed, guarantee they have their hands in that shit. Half by 2030, and to reach net zero by 2050. We've completed more than 1,600 COVID-related projects. Bitch! Shut up. Zero by 2050. We've completed more than 1,600 COVID-related projects in more than 60 countries, out. published 500 articles, and hosted 800 webinars to help safeguard lives and livelihoods. Replace this with the word uh, doc indoctrinate. Replace Navigate the pandemic and shape the next normal. Look at this. Lives and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I don't care that you're Indian. I don't care that you're Indian. We've completed Bitch! more than 1,600 COVID-related projects in more than 60 countries, published 500 articles, and hosted 800 webinars to help safeguard lives and livelihoods, navigate the pandemic, and shape the next. What is the next normal? What ex what is the, the the next normal? The next normal is you're gonna get fucking jab boosted in the ass 24-7. You're gonna get PCR tests through your butthole like they're doing in China now. This is McKenzie and company partnering with the World Economic Forum to control every aspect of your existence, ladies and gentlemen. That is a fact. It's normal. Our purpose is to help create positive, enduring change in the world. I've emboldened our colleagues to be ambitious and find ways we can double our current rate of innovation. So That's a great video, but we have to pause here for a second. Double the innovation? That's got to be at least like five times the creativity, right? Or like 10 times the amount of disruptive, revolutionary paradigm shifts in equivalent units. How did they do that? Anyway, no of course consulting companies are going to say they're influential. Otherwise, why would you hire them? But you might still want to, I don't know, not take everything consulting companies say at face value. After all, during McKinseygate, a lot of the discourse in France focused on the pointlessness of some of these expensive contracts. One contract in particular got a lot of press. A project by the- Watch it be a bullshit ass, super expensive consulting contract that the government paid, I was just absolute ass, watch it. Boston Consulting Group to organize a conference that never happened and never got rescheduled. Absolutely nothing happened and, and it cost France it. over 500,000. Bro, scamming, straight scamming your tax dollars. Like a fucking vacuum, just 
absorbing every penny of your existence, every single penny that you have, just laundering it. Laundering the government funds, baby. Right in front of your face because you're a stupid. Thousand euros. But that example, as ridiculous as it is, is more of a red herring than anything else. Consultants really did have a lot of influence in French politics for the past few years. No shit. Take housing assistance. In January of 2021, the French government announced it would reform its housing assistance program, supposedly in need of, quote, modernization. What did modernization look like? 30% of state fund recipients saw their assistance shrink. Another 6% got cut off entirely. Processing delays went from one month to three under the new, more technical system. In short, several hundred thousand French people in poverty were put into an even more difficult situation than they were in before. And behind it all, so a it four work. million euro check made out to the consulting cabinet, McKinsey & Company. But don't worry, thanks to McKinsey's advice, the state saved nearly four billion euros. Yay! How did they do it? By following McKinsey's incredible tip to cut off the poor and dump them on charity's lap. Truly revolutionary stuff. Nice. But that's not the only place where consulting cabinets were involved. According to the French- Oh, look at them. Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy that literally everybody has the same symbols on everything? Isn't it crazy that everybody has all the same symbols? It's so weird, like shit's just like hella connected. Let me find that. Like I know, I know the double snake is popular, bro. But there has to be, there has to be some sort of background on this shit, dude. There has to be some background on this. I'll do some research. I'll let you guys know. I interrupted. My bad. I'm just curious why everything looks the same. Senate report, consulting cabinets were involved in most big reforms made by the Macron government. Consultants orchestrated the management of the COVID vaccination campaign, intervened in the reform of unemployment insurance, of vocational training, legal aid, and in the health system. Consulting services are used from the- Private companies are the ones consulting and doing all the data analytics and, and collection of information and then consulting on it to governments. Bro, look at this bitch, bro. She, she, look, look at her eyes, bro. Look at her eyes. This is the woman out here creating your fucking recipes, bro. She's looking at two, two at the same time, like a chameleon. On the top of the government, all the way down to road speed radars, which the state has deferred the responsibility of managing to Soprasteria and EGIS, two more consulting firms, at a cost of 82 million euros. Fuck, bro. 82 million dollars, bro, to consult for a government agency, bro. When you take the time to look, it turns out you can find the fingerprints of this or that consulting firm at every level, down to even the most basic functions of the state. Still, you might be tempted to ask whether this is a problem. People are people. Somebody was going to have to take care of it. Why does it matter that it's consultants? And that's not a bad question. But the problem with all this is that consultants don't operate on the same incentives and logic as civil servants. Consulting firms, since they're private industries, operate on the logic of businesses and profit. The author, journalist, and, as it turns out, former McKinsey consultant Anand Giridharadas writes about the way consulting works in his book Winners Take All. Here he is describing how consulting firms present themselves and the messages that they communicate. McKinsey, like Goldman, had a persuasive story to tell. It was a place where you could change the world, improve lives, invent something new, solve- McKenzie, like Goldman Sachs, a criminal organization known for funneling billions of dollars, hosting criminal syndicates, bank accounts, and manipulating the equities markets. Yes, McKenzie, like Goldman, right? Had a persuasive story to tell. Of a complex problem, but these firms were in fact channeling a widespread dogma of the market as the place for world changing and of market types as ideal world changers. Consulting firms exist to deliver a central message, that change is the exclusive domain of the private sector, that governments might have good intentions, but that markets are more- Governments do not have good intentions. Governments are just vehicles used by people. More effective, more efficient, and more capable of bringing about any desirable outcome, including social justice. 
This message that's at the core of consulting firms, and more broadly neoliberalism, suggests that governments should therefore try to act like the private sector. To adopt its logic and its crazy. methods, or downright outsource responsibilities if they really want to make good on their promises. In other words, if they want to work, governments have to start acting like startups. And to do that, they have to hire consultants to show them how. Bro, crazy. CRAZY! Can somebody check how much how much money the US has spent on consulting? Let's see. Let's see what it says. Consulting service industry. Let's see here. How can somebody pull how much the government spent? How much the government spent in uh in consulting? Let me see. I found some information here. Okay, check this one out. Even even these these agencies running ads. Somebody look up this company. Mentor Media. Mentor Media. 1 billion in campaign ad buys, more recently playing 245 million in ad spend. So let's say they were taking the 10%, 10%, 15% fee on the ad spend, they're making 20, 25 million bucks on that. I think I heard about one of these agencies, but I'm, I'm very curious to find out how much money comes through them because guaranteed the lobbying is just probably fucking insane. It's insane. Uh, if you guys want me to research stuff, I'm definitely down to research a ton of stuff. What I will do is open up the Discord this upcoming week and create a section where you guys can send me that information and I'm gonna do my, and I'm gonna do my due diligence. So make sure that you get that to me um, when we open up the Discord. Let's continue with this video. The problem is that consulting firms don't typically end up delivering on the promise of efficient social justice for not. one key reason. Profit and social justice don't mix. <laughs> According it's to consultants, bro. you can always find a win-win solution that satisfies both the good thing you're trying to do and helps your bottom line. You can always do well by doing good, but the reality is you can't. But consulting firms try to sell it like this. Capitalism is in crisis. People are wary of big business and blame it for the major social, economic, and environmental problems they face. Businesses are accused of profiting at the general public's expense, and the public's not wrong. But we, consultants, we can fix businesses and society at the same time. We can align businesses and their immediate goals of profit yeah, because imagine, bro, imagine you go to the private sector and your clients are the private sector, but then also the public sector. And you're like, well, guys, let's just come to the table real quick and like, let's discuss how we can compromise and how we can all get rich real quick. We'll fuck the small guy over, but you know, I'll give you some subsidies, right? I'll give the banks, I'll give the government some subsidies. Well, we'll you guys can trade fucking Nvidia stock like like Nancy Pelosi, you guys can do that a little bit earlier, but then, you know, we'll, we're just gonna play the cards the way that we want to. Fucking finessers, bro. Profit with social responsibility. Consulting can help get rid of outdated methods of value creation that hurt the image of the capitalist economy today. Basically, if you're a business owner, don't worry. The consultants are here, and we're going to rehabilitate capitalism. And that's not me, JT from Second Thought, saying that. That's Michael Porter and Mark Kramer, two consulting firm founders writing in the Harvard Business Review. In case you want to pull that article up, I'm going to actually pull that up. I'm going to dissect it and let you guys know what I, uh, what I hear tomorrow when I read it. Okay, let's go back. 
In practice, this works about as well as you can imagine. Consulting firms don't rehabilitate capitalism as much as they give it more room to breathe. When they work with governments, as in France, they are there to dismantle the state apparatus bit by bit. Make things like poverty the private sector's problem. Pawn people off on charity because when you want to run the government like a business, it's just good business sense to cut down on your expenses. But it doesn't end there. When they work with other private firms, consultants are there to serve as a tool for executives to wield against their workers, to formalize the power dynamics inherent to capitalism. Consultants, expensive, flashy, and well-regarded, pump out reports that outline how the best thing for a company to do, the most profitable thing, is to disregard workers and their demands for higher wages, better benefits, and work conditions. No, no, see, our report says the best thing to do is to make incremental reforms and make sure workers feel valued, without giving them a nickel more, of course. We know, we know how these, uh, these reports are made, huh? It's all for fucking bottom line, bro, it's crazy. And hey, because they're experts and did the research, consultants are infinitely more legitimate than a handful of workers, coming up with ideas themselves, discussing them together, and uniting for better working conditions. That's not very scientific after all. And it turns out the science commissioned by your managers says capitalism was the best way to go all along, so we'll just listen to that and you can stop with all the unionizing stuff. If this sounds far-fetched to you, look no further than a McKinsey report from September 2021 published amid fears of the Great Resignation, in which the consulting firm alleges that employees crave investment in the human aspect of work. More than pay, benefits, or perks, workers want to, quote, feel valued. The report was accompanied by this chart, plotting the importance for employees of health. Sorry guys, I'm gonna read this. So the most important thing to an employee is a work-life balance. <laughs> Look at the difficult chart. <laughs> Look at the bullshit chart to explain to somebody, to explain to somebody that the most important thing for, for an employee is work-life balance, bro, this shit's amazing. Health and compensation, somewhat or less important, alongside their having a sense of belonging and feeling valued. Very important, according to the report. These bro, tell me, tell me you can't generate this report. Give me like, give me a hundred, a hundred racks, bro. I'll walk around your office. I'll tell you all the problems your office has. Value, valued by organization, work-life balance, sense of belonging, and health is important. To them. Like, look at the, all the generic bullshit stuff that they put for that they put forth in front of you. It's insane. Reports tell executives to quote, listen to their people. Just listen to your people, people but never to the point of actually letting them decide anything themselves. And certainly not when their demands start getting in the way of your bottom line. And this isn't some cherry-picked example. Anti-union consulting is a rampant problem. Companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Ikea are hiring <coughs> all sorts of consulting firms with less publicly recognized names to tamp down unions or any sort of labor power. A study by the Economic Policy Institute estimates that American employers spend roughly $340 million annually on union avoidance consultants, using a wide range of legal and- My problem with unions though, is you, you, you know, if a company's really, really big and they're not, and they're not public, then they should be unionized, but in some way, shape or form, but at the end of the day, all you're doing is moving the power chain somewhere else. If you if you look at Al Capone, Al Capone, you know what Al Capone did, the way that he took over was he would just go to different businesses, unionize them, put them all together into labor forces, and then go after the businesses, right? So he would own the unions. So in and of themselves, whatever idea he's going to propose is probably going to his worldview, so and their employers contribute more towards these plans. They are also more likely to have paid vacation and sick leave. Union workers are more likely to have retired. Okay, <clears throat> anyway, so there we got union workers. But the point is, Mackenzie, ladies and gentlemen, I need to do some more research on Mackenzie and this consulting company that runs the world. But I'm gonna continue it tomorrow. I have, the, I have two videos on Mackenzie that I wanna share with you guys. They had some crazy, their, their hands were fucking dirty with this opioid epidemic that nobody's talking about. They had to pay over half a billion dollars in settlements. 
Half a billion dollars. McKenzie had to pay over half a billion dollars in settlements in 2021 because of the opioid epidemic. So if you don't think that companies are out here causing harm intentionally because they'll pay 500 million in fucking penalties and net 4 billion, then you must be out of your mind. All these major companies, look at the fees and the fines Chase Bank has gotten for manipulating uh, the gold and silver market. They're massive. But as long as their profit is more than the expense, right? Or the, the fee that you get for doing bad business and being corrupt, then it doesn't really matter. Ladies and gentlemen, that was your stream of the day. If you have not hit the like button, hit the like button right now, motherfucker. If you're watching this on a replay, because you will, and you've come to the end of, end of the stream, hit the, hit the comment button. I'm going to hit refresh when I end the stream. It's going to be about 30 seconds. You're going to wait. Then you're going to hit refresh and you're going to comment. You're going to comment because I'm on here every fucking day giving you guys game.